the uh, speaker of our next talk titled the um, diets and nutrition and PSC is Dr. Valentina Medici. Um, she is the uh, associate professor of um, medicine at UC Davis, Department of Gastroenterology and Hepatology. Her research interest includes um, studying nutritional problems um, involving uh, hepatologic and gastrointestinal diseases. Um, I would leave the podium to you. Good morning, and thank you, Dr. Bolos and the organizer for, the, for inviting me to be here. So, uh, well, as you just heard, I'm a, I'm a gastroenterologist, hepatologist, and uh, the reason why I'm here is that I have a special interest in, in nutrition, and uh, uh, particularly in, again, liver disease, and particularly I have a special interest, again, in, in rare diseases. So, um, Let's see, so it is uh, kind of challenging to give uh, dietary recommendation and uh, um, advice uh, in patients with uh, uh, liver disease in general, and particularly with patients with PSC. And that is because there is such a variety uh, of uh, presentation and challenges that we have to face. Uh, first of all, it really varies a lot uh, um, on the uh, disease, liver disease stage. Whatever it's early, of course, if it's uh, more advanced, and, uh, or if it's even post-liver transplant. And of course, uh, every patient is different. The progression of liver disease, the rate of progression is different. And not all patients will end up with advanced liver disease or, or liver transplant, of course. Then it the, depends on the uh, associated conditions, the presence of uh, um, inflammatory bowel disease, um, eventually PSC patients like anybody else can have problems with you know, overweight, uh, obese eventually, and eventually develop uh, um, insulin resistance or uh, diabetes. Age, it is very different to give recommendations to a patient that it's in pediatric ages or more advanced age, and of course, the cultural background. Sometimes I do have to face the issue, you know, what, how do you recommend um, protein, um, in, increase the protein in the diet? It depends, of course, on the taste, vegan, vegetarian, it, it can be challenging. However, I will focus essentially on three stages. Um, where it's uh, uh, mild, sorry, I shouldn't say no liver disease, obviously mild or very early liver disease, uh, PS, PSC with more advanced liver disease, uh, with uh, cirrhosis essentially, or um, cholestasis and uh, portal hypertension, and uh, uh, post-liver transplant. And I will uh, obviously focus more on the, on the phases when there is more cholestasis and uh, um, cirrhosis. So for PSC in early stages, fortunately, there are really no very specific recommendations. Um, and this is because, as anybody else's, PSC patients have to follow healthy diets, and, uh, but again, no specific restrictions. I think that uh, in terms of um, um, it, it's, it's a good idea eventually to start to be familiar uh, of what it means to take a, you know, a normal amount or adequate amount of, of calories. So any individual would need 25 to 35 uh, kilocalories per kilo a day to maintain body weight. And I will go into this more um, during this presentation. What it is because it's very important to maintain adequate muscle mass. That is what it's very, to avoid the muscle loss, um, that it's a major problem with the, problem with the advancement of, uh, uh, with pro progression of liver disease. So that means that, for example, individual with the, that weights about 70 kilos, uh, we need about 2,000 calories a day. And what are um, healthy dietary choices? So like anybody else's, eat your whole grains, uh, monounsaturated fats, uh, omega-3 fatty acid, and here are some examples. Um, low saturated fats, uh, processed, uh, no processed sugars, and favored lean proteins, uh, um, plant-based proteins primarily. Uh, but ultimately, it boils down to the um, physiology or the pathophysiology of uh, uh, liver disease in, in PSC or in other patients with cholestatic liver disease. So when there is a damage of the intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts, there is obviously not adequate bile flow 
uh, from the uh, from the liver to the intestine, and uh, the bile, uh, among various th things, is also crucial for digesting and absorbing uh, fats in the diet. So when there is no not adequate bile flow or bile acid. Uh, absorption or uh, recirculation essentially because again of the chronic damage caused by PSC we don't have adequate absorption of fats and that has consequence in the um, absorption of fats long-term malnutrition and eventually absorption also what we call fat soluble vitamins so those vitamins and I will go into this that have a high fat component that are essentially fat and, uh, um, but are essential um, for our body. So, and PSC is really nutrition-wise a perfect storm, again, when there is a progression of liver disease. Not all patients will end up with this. And that is because problems with fat absorption, there may be problems with fluid retention and uh, um, sodium uh, retention, problems with protein synthesis, so developing like protein deficiency, and the problem eventually also with insulin resistance and, and diabetes. So, and it is not just a, an academic conversation just because, you know, the physiology of PSC is uh, uh, complicated but also interesting. Uh, but malnutrition, it's a serious problem and not an easy one to fix. Um, because the malnutrition is a predictor of a poor quality of life and also increased of, uh, risk of mortality before and even post liver transplant. Uh, sarcopenia, meaning the loss of muscle mass, that's what we really have to work hard uh, to protect. Um, it's, it's associated with increased risk of mortality even post-transplant. Post so we have to work really hard to make sure that uh, we um, slow the progression of these uh, phenomena. And uh, again, I'm just presenting this because uh, this is becoming part of a clinical practice and uh, you may not have one, having one of these CT scans at some point. We are becoming better and better in uh, um, assessing uh, malnutrition. And uh, because this is not just based like on a physical exam, but now there is the availability of measuring, um, to actually quantify malnutrition or the loss of uh, muscle mass. And it is through a CT scan, so a simple test, then which can measure the uh, thickness of the psoas muscle, uh, which is again a skeletal muscle that it's um, fusiform long, elongated muscle that it's closed by the uh, vertebral column. And uh, this has been associated that uh, when it's uh, um, the thickness of this muscle is reduced, this is associated with worse uh, risk of uh, increased risk of mortality. And this has been associated with uh, uh, mortality even better than other parameters, like for example the MED score, which is currently used in, in clinical practice. So I'm just saying this because it's uh, again becoming part of a clinical practice, and uh, you may ask if it's available uh, to test for uh, um, your muscle mass status and malnutrition. So, but here comes the important part. What, when the, what happens when the, there is progression of the liver disease in patients with PSC? And really, I will apply this to any patients with liver disease with some specific challenge for PSC. Well, there is often decreased oral intake, lack of appetite, sense of taste is not that great, uh, decreased intestinal absorption, uh, and that is specific also for um, PSC, uh, reduced fat absorption and also increase energy expenditure. And this is really crucial. So the way a patient with liver disease use calories is different from patients uh, uh, with, with subjects with a uh, healthy liver, let's say. And that is because the uh, source of calories that uh, used by patients uh, uh, with cirrhosis, let's say, and particularly with PSC, for example, after a 10 hour fasting, let's say overnight, is the same source of calorie that a, um, that a subject with healthy liver will use after a three day fasting. So meaning that patients with liver disease burn calorie like in a wrong way, and this is wasting their muscles, okay? So the message here is eat well and make sure that the fasting is not very prolonged. Not, not make sure that you eat frequently. And here, uh, and I will give you more specific about this. This is for example a study that it's been published ten, about 10 years ago, but there are many others showing that comparing patients that receive protein supplementations throughout the day, and these are the empty bars, and uh, patients that received protein supplementation just at night time before going to sleep. 
So patients that receive a protein supplementation at night time, the black bar, were able to maintain their total body proteins, and this is what the, uh, black bar, the bars represent, over 12 uh, months, much better than patients that were receiving protein supplementation throughout the day. So patient with uh, PSC and advanced stages, so let's uh, come down to the specific uh, recommendations. We need more calories. And uh, so if an um, individual with healthy liver uh, would take about 25 to 35 kilocalories per kilo a day, a patient with a liver disease would need 35 to 40, sometimes more, kilo kilocalories per kilo a day. But what type of calories? It's not just a matter of quantity of calories, but also the quality of the calories. And you have really to work hard on your proteins. So you need at least 1.5 grams per kilo of protein a day. And uh, uh, I know I'm giving some numbers here, but obviously a dietitian can help you to figure this out. Um, uh, but like, for example, a person that is about 150 pounds uh, would need uh, uh, up to 100 grams of, of protein uh, per day total. And some golden rules. So small and frequent meals, uh, short fasting time. So really, if you remember one thing um, from this lecture today as a message, I would be happy. And this is this. So make sure you eat your, your snack before going to sleep. Obviously, this is a little challenging. And not, it, that doesn't work for everybody. And sometimes I've been giving this advice to patients with diabetes, and then they come back with the diabetes is completely off. So talk with, your, talk with your doctor. But this is, in general, really the golden rule. So take, take your proteins before going to sleep. Make sure that um, uh, your fasting time is not prolonged and uh, have an early morning breakfast, uh, again with proteins, but complex carbohydrates as well, high proteins throughout the day, uh, avoid skipping meals, and obviously when there is fluid retention, stay on a low salt diet. So what, that do, what, what does it mean talking about proteins? Uh, so there are some proteins like, for example, eggs, milk, yogurt, cottage cheese, um, chicken, fish, turkey. Other meats obviously can be very rich in salt, so beef and pork can be a problem. Uh, but other excellent sources, um, more lean proteins, uh, beans, quinoa, wild rice, and we can talk forever about this, but uh, I see a lot of you taking pictures, so please go ahead. But there are a lot of uh, sources of proteins that you can find out there. So what about the fats? So fats, again, a specific problem for PSC patients. That has to be lower in the diet. Uh, again, we're talking about more advanced liver disease stages because the problem is that PSC will not be able to absorb and certain symptoms can get worse, like for example, diarrhea because of fat malabsorption. Uh, but here's some, some, some example of healthy and unhealthy fats that um, you, can, you can take. But still, you need to, take, to eat some fat because of the need of these uh, fat-soluble vitamins. And I'm going into the specific. What patients with the PSC specifically may be deficient of and will likely be deficient of is a fat-soluble vitamins. So fat, uh, vitamins that are soluble in, in, in lipids. And these are vitamin A, D, E, and K. So for vitamin A, you may need to be supplemented, otherwise you may develop a, a eye prob visual problems or a skin rash. However, excessive supplementation with vitamin A can be also toxic. So discuss this with your doctor. Vitamin D deficiency is extremely common in the general population. So if you want to start taking it regardless, it's probably a good idea and uh, vitamin E and K. Uh, I started this presentation saying I'm not, I'm not gonna advertise anything or give any specific names. However, I realized that my patients, every time that I mention a brand, they're really happy because they really wanna know what to buy and not what to eat. So here it is. I have no relation with this. I'm not selling it, but this is a product that, um, that where uh, basically this is a, a water miscible uh, fat soluble vitamins. So basically these are uh, fat soluble uh, vitamin A, D, E, and K that are formulated in a solution that can be easily absorbed by patients with uh, a cholestasis problem, and it's uh, Aquadex in case you need it. Another, um, the name of it, it's Aquadex. Okay. <laughs> so the other thing is uh, 
uh, for fat absorption. So uh, in case you need to have uh, you know, some additional calories from fat, that fat in the diets normally comes as long chain triglycerides, but this is another formulation that is particularly helpful and it's medium chain triglycerides. And then it's good because the, um, they don't need the bile acid to be absorbed. Okay. So it's particularly helpful for patients with cholestasis. You can take two or three spoons of this a day with a salad, for example, and that will increase the fat absorption. Then osteoporosis, I know there are um, big sessions about uh, uh, osteoporosis um, in, uh, and it's actually more what it's called a hepatic osteodystrophy in patients with uh, um, PSC. But, uh, so I won't go much, much into this, but it's a, it's a major issue, of course. Uh, take your vitamin D and calcium and be physically active to um, reduce the risk of that. So talking about uh, supplements, what are good for patients with, with liver diseases? Again, I'm giving you specific brands because in the end I think what it's needed. Uh, Ensure Plus, Boost Plus are good, uh, for example, if you want to take it at night time, as I was saying, uh, because they're the ones very rich in proteins. But if there is an issue with overweight or diabetes, these are alternatives, like Glucerna with the less uh, uh, glucose content. Uh, some few things that also my patients always like to hear, what about coffee? Coffee is a great choice. If you, if you like it, just take it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so patients, and it just, just for patients with PSC, we have, we, we have a lot of data showing that uh, coffee is good for patients with, with liver disease. And uh, for example, this is a study that's actually fairly recent from the Mayo Clinic, showing that comparing hundreds of patients with PSC compared to um, healthy subjects, and uh, um, you can see that patients with uh, uh, PSC were uh, over time um, uh, drinking much less coffee than healthy subjects. Uh, by age 18, were less, a, a smaller percentage of coffee drinker. Um, over lifetime uh, cups of coffee per month were lower than healthy subjects. And obviously also a higher percentage among PSC patients of people that never were never a coffee drinker in their life. And that is important, apparently, because <clears throat> coffee drinking by age 18 was as independently and negatively associated with PSC. So less coffee drinking, more risk of PSC. And this is uh, not just for PSC. We, we have a lot of epidemiological data showing that um, drinking coffee is again, actually protective for liver disease. So. Other things, you know, probiotics. Uh, I know there was another presentation about the, pro, um, uh, the microbiome, so that kind of related to how to change the intestinal flora. Um, but really, there is not much out there. Uh, we know that probiotics have some sort of beneficial effect in liver disease in general. It makes particular sense for PSC, given the close connection between the gut, um, the risk of inflammatory bowel disease, and the risk of liver disease. But the data, as Dr. Tabibian was saying, it's, in reality, it's, it's small, the clinical data especially. There is this data, that it's, this study that is kind of discouraging, but it's, we are very early in understanding what's going on. So this was a study on 14 patients with PSC and inflammatory bowel disease, taking probiotics versus placebo for three months, and they didn't do anything in terms of uh, itching, fatigue, bilirubin, ALK-FOS levels. But again, this is very early, so stay tuned, more data will come out. This is another more interesting thing, I think, in case you're, you're interested. Uh, curcumin, it's, um, it's recently has been used, uh, I mean, it's, it's been used in the um, uh, Asian um, culture for, uh, for centuries, essentially, celebrative uh, uh, meals. And, uh, but it, it is true that it has anti-fibrotic and anti-inflammatory properties. Um, there are some preclinical data in PSC, in in vitro model actually, so in cell cultures, showing that it may work. And there is an ongoing uh, clinical trial, a small one, but in case uh, um, you wanna look into this. And just one really, one slide, the post liver transplant. Post liver transplant patients will have more the tendency actually to gain weight because of the medications they're taking primarily. Um, it's a good idea to avoid raw food and shellfish avoid grapefruit juice, because that can interact with the tacrolimus, uh, but in general, healthy eating. And that is my last slide, and thank you for your attention.